another in the series of electric potential energy for point charges. And in today's video, we are going to calculate the amount of work that you do when you move two charges close together. Now, this is the situation. We want to know how much work do you do? How much work do we do when you, how much work do you do when you move a charge, a five microcoulomb charge from very far away to a point that is only half, excuse me, quarter of a meter from an 18 microcoulomb charge. Now, I would like to point something out. This says that this charge is very far away. It doesn't say infinitely far away, but that's what they mean when they say very far away. What they mean really is that it's so far away that it has no potential energy with respect to this charge. So these two charges are separated by an infinite distance. See, this one is our main charge. The 18 microcoulomb charge is going to stay here. But this charge, so you can barely see it. It's so far away. It's infinitely far away. All right? So that's an important point to remember, and I'll point out what that means and why that is applicable or important in a moment. But it says very far away, and they mean it's infinitely far away. Now, if you're taking AP Physics, and even if you're not taking AP Physics, but if you are taking AP Physics, this is the equation that's on your equation sheet. This is the equation that you're going to use. It says the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of charge and the potential difference through which that charge is moved. Now, it says here work. Now, what are we going to do to change this around so we can get the work out of it? Well, you should remember when you do potential energy, when you do potential energy, when you change something's potential energy, you do work. So the amount of work you do is equal to the change in potential energy. So you need to remember that because this, the change in potential energy is on your equation sheet. The fact that it equals the amount of work is not. But remember, okay, remember work and potential energy. When you do work, you change something's potential energy. When you change something's potential energy, you do work. All right, now, you'll also notice here this says the change in potential, and there is no change in potential. It doesn't say the change in potential is, or it doesn't say from a point where the potential is x to a point where the potential is y. So we're going to need to calculate the change in potential. Now, it's not that hard to do. This is the equation that we use to calculate the change in potential. So I'm going to substitute this in for our change of potential. Now, the change of potential is the final potential minus the initial potential. So I'm going to rewrite the equation so that the change of potential energy is equal to the amount of charge, Q, times the change of potential, which is the final potential, see, KQR, KQR final, KQR initial, the final minus the initial potential. K is Coulomb's constant. Q is, the poten is this charge, because this is the charge that's generating the potential, and this is the charge that we're moving through that potential. So you want to keep those separate from each other. I like to say capital Q is our main charge, little q is the charge we're going to move. But it says here the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of charge and the potential through which it's going to move, or through which we are going to move it. Now, it says very far away. What does that mean? That means that this distance here is really big, infinitely big, and if the initial distance between the two charges is infinite, then this is infinitely big because this is K times the amount of charge and the distance between those two charges. Okay, if this number is infinitely big and any number divided by an infinitely big number is, any number divided by a really big number is zero. So now, all we have to do is we have to calculate the change in potential energy or the amount of work we do is we take the, the charge we're moving, and we multiply it times k times q and times the final distance. Now, I just want to point out once again, we do have an initial distance, so there is a change. It's just that it starts at zero. Okay, it's so far away that the potential energy is zero. And really what we're thinking about is the amount of potential energy between these two charges initially is so small that when we calculate the final potential energy, it won't really have any effect on it. It's like saying, oh, I have a million, and I'm going to take one away. Well, that's fine, because I got a million of them. All right? So we're going to substitute our numbers in, because we're going to move this charge in like this, so that it is half a meter away. So RF is, excuse me, a quarter of a meter. And then we can just plug the numbers in. The amount of charge that we moved is plus 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Remember, when you're calculating potential energy, and potential, you have to use the sign on the charge. Now, in both cases, this is positive. 
but we want to make sure that we carry our science through because we can't have negative and we can't have positive work. All right, we'll talk a little bit about that and what that means in just a moment. Now, we have K, Q, and R, F. Now, K is 9 times 10 to the 9th. And to save space here, I, did not, I didn't put units on my numbers, but 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons, meters um, squared, coulomb squared, times plus 18 microcoulombs. Remember, this is microcoulombs. Micro is 10 to the minus 6, so I can just put 10 to the minus 6 on the end of my 5 and 10 to the minus 6 on the end of my 18. I'm going to divide those by the distance between them. It's not the distance squared. It's just the distance between them for potential energy. And if I multiply this times this times this and divide by this, and I come out with that we do 3.24 joules of work. The change in potential energy between those two charges is plus 3.24 joules, which means we do 3.24 joules of work because, as we said above, the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of work. Now, if we do positive work, because we're doing, we're changing a positive change in potential energy, we do positive work, what does that mean? Well, that means we have two charges, we're bringing them closer together, and if the amount of work we do is positive, then we know that those two charges don't want to be together. This is a positive, and this is positive, they would repel each other. And therefore, we have to apply a force, and we have to do work to bring them closer together. If the change in potential energy, or the change in work, or if you do negative work, that means you're bringing two charges closer together that want to be together. But in this case, we have a change in potential energy or the amount of work we do is positive and therefore we know we're bringing two charges together that don't want to be together. Okay, so that's it. Remember, infinitely far away, the initial potential, the initial potential energy between those charges is zero. And then you just have to use the final distance, plug the numbers in, get the answer, and away you go. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, please give me a thumbs up below. I love getting thumbs ups. Or give me a nice comment in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.